If you want to get a sense of how solar power is reshaping America's energy landscape, you could do worse than to pay a visit to the vast Ivanpah solar thermal plant in the Mojave Desert. Almost 350,000 mirrors, each of them calibrated to track the desert sun, shimmer across 3,500 acres of a dry lake bed. The site is almost biblical. Yet despite its dazzling aspect, in some ways Ivanpah is no different from old-fashioned fossil fuel plants. The heliostats reflect the rays of the sun onto three boilers mounted on top of 460-foot towers, generating steam to turn turbines. At full capacity, Ivanpah is expected to generate 377 megawatts of clean energy, powering 140,000 homes across Southern California. Solar power still represents less than 1% of America's energy mix, but it is growing quickly. Last year, it accounted for 29% of electrical capacity added to the grid. More than half this growth took place in sunny California, which is winding down its incentive schemes. That, say Solar's fans, is proof that it is ready to take its place among traditional energy sources. Ivanpah is the largest plant of its kind in the world, but for all its grandeur, it probably does not represent the future of solar in the US. America may not see many more Ivanpahs. The fastest growth is to be found on top of people's houses and businesses in the form of photovoltaic solar cells, which convert sunlight directly to electricity. In the final quarter of 2013, over 2,100 megawatts were installed across the country. More solar power was installed in the last 18 months than in the previous 30 years. But the growth of distributed or rooftop solar presents a threat to the business models of traditional utility firms. Right now, the big battleground is over net metering, which allows solar customers to sell excess energy back to the grid. Utility firms say this allows them to free ride on other customers, who are paying not only for the electricity they consume, but capital investment and infrastructure maintenance. But beyond the row over net metering, far bigger battles loom. The cost of solar panels has plummeted in recent years. Utilities cannot hope to preserve their old business models in a world where electricity customers find it cheaper and more efficient to generate their power near home rather than having it travel over hundreds of miles of wooden poles. Another reason for the rapid growth of distributed solar is the increasing sophistication of the companies that provide it. For example, in many places, customers can lease a solar system from a third party, reducing or even avoiding hefty upfront costs. The future looks bright for solar. One research firm expects 26% growth this year. The Department of Energy thinks it could provide over a quarter of America's electricity needs by 2050. But the road may be bumpy in places. In 2017, a federal tax credit for solar energy will be cut to 10% from 30%. That is already affecting the structure of the industry. Some utility firms will continue their state-level struggles against net metering, and some regulators may be receptive to their pleading. And the path for solar will depend in part on how prices for other energy sources vary, and no one can predict that. The Economist.